So now let us go to uh, our first application. This application is risk based approach in support of extension in support of regulatory licensing. Um, the plant has become old and uh, based on the uh, design postulation when the plant was designed the life was expected to be 20, 30 or 40 for this subject application 30 years. So after 30 years uh, we have to revisit the plant uh, status uh, and uh, try to see uh, whether the life can be extended number one. If the life can be extended then for how many years number two and uh, uh, with this proposal your study you go to the regulators and ask for an approval and they will study your document and then finally give the approval. So these are the, this is the broad procedure. So uh, here we will be discussing about one plant that is called isomade, it is a irradiated um, uh, nuclear irradiator and uh, it is used for, um, for, medic uh, for medical uh, equipment uh, you know uh, and then for even the food irradiation and all that uh, we use it. Let us get, get to the item. So the plant uh, for which the uh, study was done for life extension uh, was isomet plant. It is uh, located in Mumbai, Chambur, uh, very close to BARC and uh, uh, this irradiator is called isomet and it is 30 year old. Now uh, we have to have a strategy for requalification of this plant. And in fact, to, uh, to, to my knowledge, this is the first isomet plant in commercial domain. Uh, in the, uh, it was uh, built 30 years ago. Uh, and then, um, of course, we have so many. The, the advantage of uh, putting uh, one work is that other plants can follow that same procedure for qualification. So in that sense, uh, the, this plant has been qualified for 30 years and has been approved by a regulator. So this procedure becomes, uh, you know, uh, standard procedure for uh, requalification. That's what I heard from uh, the stakeholders. So this is a very simple figure where uh, how the uh, products are irradiated. There is a chamber uh, so that the radiation should not come out. So and there is a source. And the, uh, around the source, there is a conveyor, conveyor belt on which the, uh, the product enters and then it goes around the source location and finally it comes out from here. It is very simple and elegant thing. Uh, but then aging study is always uh, complex in terms of because uh, it could become expensive if we are not able to take uh, which component to be replaced, which component not to be replaced and how is the structure, whether it can go far. So those questions, uh, if you don't give a, um, if you don't give a satisfactory answer, probably uh, a decision is difficult. So the methodology here that was adopted, this is uh, actually based on uh, one paper we published in uh, nuclear engineering uh, and design. Uh, myself and my colleagues, they were there. It is a, you can find in 241, uh, volume number of 241 and the year is 2011. So all the details have been given here. Here I have made it very uh, brief, uh, but it, you can obtain and it is I think available in public domain because I could myself download the copy. Then this is the plan work down, the data collection on all the structures and all. What I have shown is the sale only. There is a, there are a lot of things outside also. Uh, and then, um, then the re regulatory requirement, then according to the design details, whatever uh, they are available, you have to collect and development of a PRA model. So uh, design, once the design details and their criteria uh, for approval is there, then we can carry out PRA and we can apply on the same rules and whatever new rules have come and that also should be validated. Um, this is a part of uh, aging requalification. Then development of list of initiating, you know that. For PRA, you have to develop a list of initiating events, safety feature modeling and analysis, map the model on deterministic approach because uh, this uh, deterministic approach has to be uh, had, uh, compli has to be compliant. There is no question on because uh, uh, even at uh, national level, uh, this uh, deterministic approach is the primary approach for design, operation and maintenance. So results of recommendation, follow up of plant modification and procedural changes, 
submission of the document regulatory authority live extension approval for 10 years that is there so this is methodology and the last bullet uh, it shows the result of this um, analysis that we took up so in the sense that uh, there was a reasonable academic component in this r d component was there uh, and then uh, the application part the methodology that is pra use use of pra in addressing real time scenario got validated similar examples you will see um, in the other uh, applications also so uh, so what we have is um, okay so list of postulated initiating event so this list was uh, drafted based on the incident experience of the plant people and uh, experience of psa for a nuclear power plant and this list was uh, so for normal operation there are three categories pies pies means postulated initiating event or in short we call initiating events also um, and then we we have a set of initiating events that need to be uh, for which inventories were to be developed and then whatever safety systems were there they had to be put on the uh, uh, header block of inventory and plant response was to be uh, determined uh, that was the complete pra uh, protocol that we have but there are three categories of event plant operation then pi is for plant shutdown or startup condition um, and external events this is similar to our nuclear plants you know uh, initiating event for, for we, call, we call full power operation then plant shutdown condition or low power operation and startup and then external events so internal events external events and then um, uh, two states of the major states of the plant uh, and you can see the list of this uh, thing this inventory uh, there were i think uh, many inventories uh, this was one of the inventory in a simplistic way i think it is related to power supply failure 1.9 is the frequency that we decided and uh, per year based on the data that were avail available then um, this system has auto lowering auto raising system uh, you know uh, gate has to be raised for operation and it has to be uh, lowered for shutdown actually uh, it goes into the cavity uh, so uh, remaining up is plant operation and uh, down is plant is shut down because radiation uh, uh, source was put in a cave uh, where there is a lot of shielding and uh, radiation cannot come out um, so and then uh, auto lowering manual lowering uh, emergency power different provisions uh, the safety provisions uh, that were source cooling uh, has to be ensured and cell uh, door interlocks how they are working uh, because uh, their door locks were, uh, were there for raising lowering then door uh, the uh, for entering into the uh, cavity and then radiation survey results whatever so with this so many uh, conditions and their uh, consequences per year were evaluated simply if you want to give a statement of risk then you add up all these things uh, which is on ansep side uh, and uh, the, the, you get the uh, results so here i am assuming that i had the quantified data available i had drawn the inventory third or fourth step there uh, i had a quantification uh, uh, one simple uh, observation has been from the studies that i think uh, if not 80% 50 to 70 percent time goes into data collection and data elicitation or analysis such that these data are fit for operation what we had in uh, machine learning and uh, you know uh, deep learning algorithm same thing is here also so data takes a lot of time if data is not good uh, results may, may not be good actually so uh, <coughs> the risk was evaluated um, and we uh, it was uh, said that for five year uh, this uh, uh, this uh, frequency is 5.1 into 10 to the power minus 6. Almost we are getting into the hypothetical domain, uh, and uh, then uh, uh, and then uh, this result demonstrated that the plant is adequate. So uh, then uh, the, and the internal uh, ICRP. There is a uh, study uh, which is uh, not a study. There is a uh, rule book or international commission for radiation protection on radiation protection this uh, it is a sort of a uh, sort of a uh, book uh, which is used has stipulated as 4% per severe for sievert sievert is a, a unit of radiation you know uh, one sievert is equal to 100 r ronjan so 
uh, uh, cancer death risk to occupational worker. So uh, th then uh, we, we had this and then from the graph it can be seen that the probability of cancer related death of the exposure is minus from my, minus 5 uh, and for, uh, for an over exposure of 0.1 millisievert and that way isomet results were found to be uh, safe and from there what all the backfitting, what all the things we have to do for improving it for another 10 years, that decision was taken. So this is, a, uh, you can see the risk profile over here, uh, dose and millisievert, 1 to 0.1 to 10 millisievert and the likelihood has been given here. So if, uh, what we have read on the slide, you can see and match here and then we have this recommendation. So I think there were uh, there were uh, 11 recommendations. I have written only major recommendation. All these recommendations uh, were met. Only three were left. Uh, which, uh, which, uh, so the, um, uh, it was something un unheard that when the study was going on, the stakeholder, they were so uh, proactive that they started modification also. And by the time we completed the study, uh, out of 11, eight uh, modifications were, were done whether it was a change of policy or buying some equipment, in, uh, removing the old equipment or some more work to be done, all those things were done. And then um, this was done in 2011. The plant is completed 10 years in 2021-22. Uh, so, um, and uh, it is it is vindic vindicated the uh, insights that are available from this study. And now the plant, it seems, is going again for uh, refurbishment, second stage of refurbishment. The way it happens for nuclear plant from 40 to 60, 60 to 80. So here also the second stage of uh, relicensing going on. But the as far as our academics is concerned, uh, the, th the theoretical approaches, they pro provide uh, results which can be used in real time uh, for decision making. Um, comments and conclusion, this, is, uh, this study is unique in the sense that it was a, demonst a demonstration of uh, risk-based approach to indicators. So it vindicated the approach of uh, risk-based engineering approach. Uh, this study formed part of a regulatory review for live extension and licensing for 10 years. Uh, interested readers may find this, uh, this particular paper. There are in two, two places this paper has been published. So the NED paper is here for us to see. And then uh, this study was NED means nuclear engineering design. This is a uh, journal on, in the area of nuclear engineering safety. Uh, this study uh, was concluded and demonstrated that the plant life is safe and the plant has seen smooth operation for 10 years. Just, so these are the final comments I am able to give after 10 years of, uh, 10 or 12 years of uh, when the study was commissioned actually. Overview, aging study, we found a very effective approach uh, and this got demonstrated on a 30-year-old isomet plant. Uh, it was the first plant built uh, for social commercial operation in India. This is what my knowledge goes. Uh, a first-of-kind uh, risk-based approach, uh, uh, approach was developed uh, and that got validated by our paper also. The study was found useful as it met the objective that is 10 years after, after 10 years we can claim at least now that uh, now it is uh, uh, 11 so third for 12 years we can we can we can now say that the whatever aims and uh, objective and what was postulated it got vindicated thank you very much